Today, we're going to learn the very basics of crochet. We'll explain some of the terms we use in crochet that'll be important. We're going to learn to tie a slip knot very easily. We're going to talk about tension and how important that is for the finished product. We'll then do the chain stitch and go into single crochet. And that'll be enough to get you started on the fun world of crochet. So to start off, we're going to learn that this is the tail end, the cut end. And then the end that's attached to the ball is called the working end. So you'll hear that. Get your tail end, get the working end. Now let's do a slip knot. I had the hardest time with a slip knot until I learned this trick. You have about six inches on the tail end of your yarn. Then you go over your finger twice. You take the back yarn, bring it over the front yarn. Then you take the one that's in the back right now, take it over the front yarn and over the end of your finger. And you pull on that and that is the slip knot. Put your hook in there and pull on the working end of the yarn and you have a perfect slip knot. Couldn't be any easier. Let's try that again. I have approximately six inches on the tail end of my yarn. I wrap the yarn twice around my finger. The top of my finger now has two loops. I take the back, put it over the front. Now, the loop that's in the back, I bring over that front loop and over the end of my finger. And pull down. Put your crochet hook in there and pull on the working end. You have the perfect slip knot. Let's do it one more time. You have six inches, approximately six inches, doesn't have to be exact. You go over your finger and over your finger again so that you have two loops. You take the back loop, put it over the front loop. Then you take the loop that's in the back now, put it over the one that's in the front now and over the end of your finger. And there you have the slip knot. Put your crochet hook inside, pull up on the working end of the yarn. And you have a slip knot, a perfect slip knot. Now tension is very important when you're crocheting and you want to be able to slip this hook through your knot or your loop, better term. It should slip in and out very easily. One way that I've found to do that is your crochet hook will often have a thumb rest which is a little bit thicker than the shaft of the crochet hook. So don't tighten up here and certainly don't tighten up at, toward the end because that is much narrower. Take it down here and tighten up and not even really tight but just a little tug so that you have a teardrop form there. I don't know if you can see that. See the teardrop? I actually have room so I can easily pull my hook in and out and in and out and that's the proper tension you should have. Now let's talk about how we're going to hold this yarn. Um, for the crochet hook there's two ways to hold a crochet hook. I am partial to the knife and they call it this way because this is how you hold a knife and cut cut your food. I find I have an easier time with this. Your hook handle is in your palm, your thumb is on the thumb rest, your pointer finger kind of braces the top of your hook and you're able to hold the loop in this hand, 
you were able to hold the loop in this hand and it's just much easier for me. The pencil method, you put the crochet hook between your pointer finger and your thumb and you manipulate it like a pencil. But I find this very hard to do and it's harder on my wrists. So I do the knife hold. I have the shaft in here, the handle I should say, in my palm. I put my thumb on the thumb rest and I am able to use my pointer finger to move this hook around. And that works really well. But how to hold the yarn? There's many, many ways to hold the yarn, but I go in, I go in like this and I scoop up the yarn between my little finger and the ring finger. I just go in and I scoop it up. Then I turn my hand over and with my pointer finger, I scoop up the yarn that way. And I find that this gives me a lot of control over my yarn, of the tension of my yarn. Again, the scoop in, we put our palm up and we scoop in between our little finger and the ring finger. Turn your hand over as you pull out a little bit. And then you can just take your pointer finger, come up and with this pointer finger, we are able to put tension on it, loosen it up. See how that works. And I also feel that it's very important to pinch gently, but pinch the bottom of the loop we're working on. And you can just drop that if, you're, if your tension's not right. You'll see crocheters, very experienced crocheters, just go in there and just scoop it up and start, start their hand motion again if it gets a little loose or a little tight. And they'll just drop this working end and they'll just go in there and scoop it up and it becomes just a second nature to do that. It takes no time at all. And now we're back to where we start. And this is a perfect place to start. So we'll talk more about tension as we go along. The first stitch we're going to learn is going to be the chain stitch. The chain stitch serves as a foundation for our product. And so it's important that we get the foundation correct. As we talked before about tension, we want to be able to easily, every single stitch, easily pull because we're going to be pulling yarn through along with that hook in and out. So here we go. You pinch the base of that slip stitch and this is called yarn over and you want the yarn to go over your hook. So we actually take the hook and go under and there it is, your yarn is over. Twist your hook around so it's able to pull and you just pull, see how easily this pulls through because I left enough tension. And I always, stitch by stitch, I pinch the base of my working stitch. Many people will do three or four or five, six chains and then move it. But I find for me that that gets a little distorted. So let's try another chain. So we take our hook under the yarn. So that makes yarn over. It's always called yarn over. And you can see why, because the yarn is over the top. And you grab it with the hook, turn it down so that it's going through that tear duct drop and there you have another chain yarn over pull through your working stitch you have another chain so I have done three chains here is four yarn over pull through and that's five pull through Yarn over, pull through. It's easier when you lickety split, go along at a good clip. But I want to be able to show you. Now look at what I've done so far. And you can see 
that we have a lot of V's. Let me pull this out so this hook is not in our way. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chains. And the reason I can count seven chains is that each stitch looks like a little V. You see this little V here? This little V here? V here? Those are chain stitches. So I have seven of those. Let's do 15. Here's eight. Here's nine. Now here we go again. My tension's getting too tight because of the way I have my the ball setting. I'm going to pull some out and I can easily go in now and scoop, put my pointer finger under and I'm back ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've done nine. This will be 10. And again, yarn over, hook it, pull through the teardrop. Yarn over, hook it, pull through the teardrop. Yarn over, hook it, pull through the teardrop. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We have, and see how even those ch chains are, how even those V's are. And that is the chain stitch. Let's pull this out, and this is called frogging. You'll do a lot of frogging, because when you see you've made a mistake or your tension's incorrect, you'll just pull it out. Pull it out. And I'm gonna go back to the very beginning and we're gonna remind ourselves of what we're supposed to do here. We'll have six inches. We'll wind it around our finger twice. We'll pull the back loop over that front loop. And the new back loop, we'll pull over the front loop and on over the fingertip. And we just that easy, we have made the slip stitch. And then we go in and set our hands just like we talked about. We made sure our tension's okay because I've got it down here at the big part of the hook. So I make sure I have a nice teardrop there. And we go yarn over, hook, pull through, yarn over, hook, pull through, yarn over, hook, pull through, yarn over, hook, pull through. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll stop at ten for this part of the demonstration. So again, we look at the V formation of the chain and you can count your stitches. We've got 10 stitches there. Now it's very easy then to go from here into single crochet. We're gonna pretend this is our foundation chain and we're gonna have 10 in our little demo swatch. Lots of times you'll have to do 30, 15, 20. It just depends on the pattern or the size of the product you're going to be making. But this is just a demo swatch, so we're going to go with 10. Now, you need to know the part of the stitches for this next part, and we do not count the stitch on the hook. We don't count that one. But we know that each stitch, each chain is a V. And so you can see here is the first V. So that's the first stitch next to my working stitch and this is the second stitch and when we start off we always work in the second stitch from our working stitch so I'm gonna bypass this first stitch and I'm gonna go into 
the second stitch. When we say into the second stitch, we do just like this. We go right in that V and we you'll just see one hook over there. We went right into the V and I'm going to do yarn over and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull that through one stitch. And now I have two stitches on my hook. We're going to go yarn over again, pull through both this time. And that is our very first single crochet. Now one tip I have learned is that the front and the back stitches look a little funny. And often you get to the end of the row and you don't know if that's the stitch you're supposed to go into. So I don't want that to happen to me going back. Now look at here. This is this V. This V here. That is our first single crochet. So I am going to take a stitch marker and I'm going to put that carefully through and fasten it and mark that as my first stitch. So I'll know when I come back around that that is going to be the last stitch in the row. So I have heard a lady I follow on line call that training wheels. So we do like our training wheels. And this has helped me immensely by having that mark the first single crochet. And now this is so simple because now we just go in every single chain and they're very easy to see because of that pronounced V. Sometimes people get a little confused because they'll see this gap here, this little hole and think, oh, that must be where I need to go in. But it's not because that is the stitch you're already in. If you pull on any of this, you can see that that moves. So that's the stitch you're in. So you go to the next stitch and look how easy that is just to stick that right through there. Yarn over, pull through that, yarn over again, pull through both of them. That's the second. We'll go to the third, yarn over, pull through that, yarn over, pull through two. Let's go into the next stitch. And here, this might be a little deceptive because as you're crocheting, the loop you've pulled through gets a little big. And so that looks, it's so tempting to stick your crochet hook right back in there. But let's not do that. Let's go to the proper one, the very next one. Pull through, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through the chain stitch, yarn over, pull through both of those stitches. You can, if you can't see very well, you can stop and kind of move your stitches around till it's a little more obvious. And mine got a little pulled out of shape because I'm kind of going slow in explaining this. So I had to kind of adjust it so I could see that this is my next chain to crochet into. Stick my hook in there, yarn over, pull through that chain stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that chain stitch, yarn over, pull through two. And this is my last V, so I will insert here, yarn over, pull through my chain stitch, Yarn over, pull through two. And I have made my first row of single crochet. It's that simple. Now again, the end of the row gets a little dicey. When we're going to go into our next row of single crochet, we always chain one because we're trying to make room for the height of the single crochets. So I ch chain one and I turn my work. This hand doesn't move. If 
very much. This hand doesn't move very much. You just flip your work because we always work from right to left. Now I go into the very first single crochet and this is a little different. In the single crochets, the V's are at the top. Let me pull this out so we won't lose that. The V's are at the top. There's V's all along here. And you will want to pull through both of those V's. Instead of just one, there will be two. Look at this. Because we went through that first V. And here we have it right there. So we'll have two. Oh, I just want to make sure I'm working the right way. Pull that aside to show you, and I got a little out of out of focus there. Let me go out of that, make sure I'm doing this right for this demo. So I go into that first, catching both. And when I redid it, see, I didn't go through both. So make sure you get both pieces of that first single crochet. And now I grab this, pull through, and we just work this the same way. Yarn over and pull through two. Now, again, we don't want to have a problem coming back. So we're going to take our, you don't have to remove your, hook. I just want to do this for demo purposes. Our very first V, our very first single crochet, you can appreciate these training wheels later. So we'll attach this. So now we have a mark and we'll know what is our last stitch to go through. We just go down the row just like this. Makes it very simple. Stick your hook into the next single crochet, both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Insert your hook into the next single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Be very careful. I have a different yarn than you probably will have. And this yarn is a little bit I don't know how to say, it's a little bit loose. And sometimes you catch a piece of that twisted yarn. You have to be very careful. That's another reason to keep your tension nice. Insert through a single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And this is what's going to save me because I always used to have, what is this the last row? Is it not the last row, the stitch in the row? But now I have my training wheels and I can see that this, this stitch is the last because it's not quite the same as the others, the first and the last in every row. So now that I see where it is, I can remove my stitch holder, keeping my eyes right on that stitch, and I insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And look at how straight that side is. Okay, so when we get to the end of the row, we have to do one chain stitch, if you remember. So that chain stitch, you just do the yarn over and pull through. And now you can turn that. Let's do our first single crochet. And we go into the first single crochet of the previous row. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. 
And let's make sure we save our bacon again by putting a stitch holder in that very first single crochet of the row. So it will be obvious for the next time. And we just keep going. And this just makes so soothing, so calming, just to go down the row making single crochet after single crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now again, I'm feeling tension because I don't have a good setup here. This is not where I usually crochet. So let me get out a little more yarn here and easily I just scoop up and get my hand back in position, get my tension correct. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Ah, okay. I see that I have a stitch marker here. So this is my last stitch of the row. Let's remove this. stitch marker insert into that yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and again my swatch is nice and squared up the edges are square And that's how you do slip knot, chain stitch, and single crochet.